Hey, welcome back to True Moto Resto. And uh, today we're going to continue with the CB900F. Uh, maybe uh, carbs, uh, seat cover, I don't know, whatever we get to. <music> So while I'm waiting for the uh, the valve shim tool and that kind of stuff to arrive, I'm just going to pick away at a few things and just keep this thing moving ahead. So uh, one thing I always try to do, and I haven't done it yet on this one, so I'm going to do it now, is before I get excited about taking this thing apart, I'm just going to start soaking any and all the fasteners just to make it a little bit easier to get everything apart. I mean, the only thing about this is it's a little, it does get a little messy, but that's okay. It'll all just land on the ramp underneath there and uh, it'll lift. Because all this stuff's got to come apart at some point, so you might as well soak it with some. I just use a PB blaster and then I'll go to WD-40 and then uh, break free CLP and I just give it a big dosing of everything I've got just laying around and usually by the time I come to take the stuff off it, it's working so and some stuff that you don't think is going to be seized and it is so I just kind of give everything a bit of a it doesn't hurt it all gets cleaned with the brake cleaner anyway before it gets painted so it's not going to hurt it to just have a little bit of penetrant and if it helps the process along, well, then that's fine. There is some corrosion going on on a bike that's been sitting around for a long time, so it's just a good idea just to give it a, a soaking. Soak everything. All right, so I just realized that one of the things that I did not talk about in the first video was just uh, the detail process that I go through when I do a restoration. If you've seen some of the other videos and you'll already know it, uh, if you're tuning in for the first time on the CB900F, um, here's what I do. Um, so aside from, you know, whatever pieces I'm tackling first, in this case, kind of get the thing running, um, I go through and I take pictures a lot of pictures at every single stage of the teardown. So I go around the bike and I take pictures from every angle that I can. Um, and the more complex the area, uh, the more pictures I take. And then when I think I have enough pictures, I take some more pictures. And uh, it's just one of those things that uh, when you, especially when you go to, to put the thing back together again, and there's you know cables and hoses and electrical and the routing, um, it becomes a you know a difficult task if you haven't got good reference as to uh, you know where everything goes. Um, certainly made easier if you have a good shop manual with the routing diagrams and that kind of stuff. But it never hurts to have have the photos. So I go through, I take photos of absolutely everything, um, and more photos than I think I'll ever need. And uh, it's never failed uh, that you know I can come to the reassembly process and find something that I wished I had a. Uh, you know, a more detailed photograph on. So it's, uh, yeah, you're not, you're not going to waste your time doing that. So just yeah, take a ton of pictures. The other thing that I do is every single step I take, uh, no matter how small the step is, if I take a bolt out of somewhere, if I take a part off the bike, uh, that step is numbered and it goes into my notebook. So I'll just kind of give you a quick look here. Um, as to this is back when I was doing the Kawasaki ZX7 so every single step that I take is has got a number I write down what I did if any particular uh, order to the procedure but getting it out if I'm if I make a note here it might be regarding hey when you put this thing back in don't forget to do this that or the other thing so uh, everything is noted and there are diagrams if things come apart in a certain way and I thought hey that's going to be kind of tricky when I go to put it back together uh, I'll, draw, I'll draw pictures just so you can put this stuff back together. Let's see, that's the foot peg assembly. Um, 
if I'm if I take things apart, like this is a picture of the frame on the ZX7, um, and there are there are body hangers and brackets all over the thing, and uh, it's again it's just a good idea. In addition to the photos, uh, I'll put a diagram. I'll number the bracket that I took off, and then it will correspond to the number here. And then any of the parts that come off are bagged and tagged. So here we go, here's the uh, the bolts for the generator cover uh, for the current project, step seven, and everything goes into a bag. Everything's labeled, the part is, uh, the bag is labeled, uh, both with the number and a description, and it goes into a box. So in my opinion, and this is for me, is there is no way that this stuff would go back together uh, easily if it wasn't for that level of kind of diligence um, it just becomes incrementally more challenging if you if you haven't gotten yourself well organized and I know that I, I've had I've had bikes I've bought bikes where the bikes have been disassembled and guys have got like boxes of bolts and nothing is labeled there are hundreds and hundreds of bolts and screws loosely thrown into a box and there isn't any way to figure out you know where those things go now thankfully when those things have happened i've been buying the bikes for parts for other projects but you know take the time take the time and bag it tag it label it um, and if you're not sure add more details write more descriptions um, it just pays dividends tenfold when you come to put the thing back together again um, so aside from that uh, yeah, just being uh, systematic and step by step, trying to kind of think a couple of steps ahead, like when I uh, kind of go around and I kind of spray all the bolts. I'm not going to be taking this bike completely apart for weeks yet because I got to get the thing running. Um, so why not start soaking those bolts and, and, uh, and nuts now so that it just makes the disassembly process that much easier when you get there and then it's kind of, you know, you're less frustrated with things being seized up on these old bikes. Um, the other thing I try to do is I'll try to get all the parts that I know I need uh, ahead of time so that way I'm not waiting um, like I am now for you know valve tool parts uh, inevitably you're always going to wait for something but I try to kind of limit that as much as I can by kind of trying to get ahead of the curve so I've got all the parts for this bike mainly here like you know tires and other things as I said it's all kind of sitting in a box so yeah, that's the general uh, process that I go through. And then when I go to reassemble the bike, once everything's painted and refurbished, I basically just reverse my steps. So I'll start at the back, you know, and this takes, in this case, step 168. And then as I get it done, I'll just put a check mark beside the step and I'll just work my way backwards through everything. And uh, I've just found that that's the, uh, the method that works for me is, you know, being very detailed, being very organized, and uh, and just save yourself all kinds of headaches. Okay, so I'm gonna give a shot at the uh, the seat cover. Um, so this is what looks to be the original seat cover, but of course it's all, all the seams here are, this isn't actually a seam, this is like a, uh, it's like called a heat pleat. Um, they kind of melt the, the pattern into the vinyl and I guess right where those patterns are, the vinyl kind of gets very thin. So usually that's the first place they start to split. And uh, this has got all kinds of splits all over it. So it needs to be replaced. I bought a, a patterned replacement off eBay. I think it came out of the UK. And so in, before I can start to pull this cover off, I've got to do a few things here. I've got to take off uh, the strap and I put a bit of uh, penetrating oil on there because that looks like it's going to be difficult to remove that particular screw but we'll see how that goes. Uh, the brackets on the uh, each side of the seat are going to have to come off and then uh, once they're off basically what I'll do is I'll just go around pull out all of the uh, all the staples, remove the cover, and then I'll start to put the uh, the new cover on. Uh, I'll show you what I use. I bought a uh, an air powered uh, stapler off of Amazon, just because the uh, I've I've only done this a couple of times, 
and the uh, the handheld industrial staplers just don't seem to uh, to penetrate. They only go part way in, and then I know they just don't seem to hold very well. So I bought a cheap one off Amazon, and for the number of times that I end up having to do this, uh, it works fine. <laughs> The other thing I'll mention here, I'll probably talk about it a bit when I do the carbs as well, is it's a good idea to have a set of uh, JIS screwdrivers for the, the Honda bikes and most of the Japanese motorcycles. So uh, a lot of these screws uh, will look like Phillips screws. They are not. They are JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard. And the difference between a JIS screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver is uh, they're not quite as pointed at the end. So if you use a Phillips screwdriver, uh, oftentimes they will kind of cam out when you turn uh, because they're a little too uh, pointy and what happens then is you end up stripping the uh, the head of the screw and uh, especially on carburetors or any of the stubborn screws so you stand a better chance it's not foolproof but you stand a far better chance of not messing up the heads of those screws if you've got some JIS screwdrivers and if you don't have any and can't get any uh, take your screwdriver and just touch it to your grinder a couple of times and just knock the tip off of a Phillips and then basically you get yourself a, a JIS screwdriver and you'll save yourself all kinds of heartache. So there I've got the uh, brackets off and the straps off, so it wasn't too bad. Alright, so everything's uh, pulled off and I should be able to start pulling this uh, seat cover off now. So I'm just using a pair of uh, needle nose pliers here just to separate the, the old cover. Uh, it looks like... Uh, So the method that seemed to work best is kind of just to use a screwdriver to pop the uh, at least one side of the staple out and then uh, go around with the pliers, needle nose after and just uh, remove them all. And uh, yeah, that seems to have missed one here. So I think you should have most of them out. And then after you get that done, then you can basically just peel the Peel the old vinyl right off there. Oh, I missed another one. So here's the new cover. It does have kind of a, it is heat pleated. It's the inside, which has got, again, it's got the same sort of uh, double coating on the inside that the original one had, although the original one, most of it had come off. 
So the way I'm going to attempt to do this, and I say attempt, again, this is only the, I think the second time I've done a seat cover. I did one on my CBX 750, and that was, was a bit of a challenge. But uh, the challenge always comes in getting these things to, I find, to get it to stretch over the seat without having the seat bend up. And then sometimes when the vinyl is too tight and the seat kind of bends up like this, then you've got a big gap at the, between the front of the seat and the, uh, and the gas tank, and that doesn't look very good. So, uh, yeah, i got to figure that out and make sure I do this properly. And sometimes you need a little bit of heat or a steamer or something, I think, to get these things to, to sit right. So the problem here is if I send, I'll show you this sideways, the seat is kind of contoured, right? There's a, there's a contour in the seat here. And when you pull these vinyl covers tight, they kind of start to tent, I'll call it. So it goes like this. So now you've got a high spot here. And there's quite a distance between the, with the foam underneath and the vinyl. So when I had that problem with the CVX seat, which was very, very curved, I ended up having to apply quite a bit of heat and then do a lot of pulling down the sides to get it to uh, to get it to sit properly. So it took quite a bit of time to do. And you've got to be careful with heat. Steam is probably a better way to go. I might try my steamer on this and see if that helps. If I can get it to work. And uh, it's, it's too easy with a heat gun to uh, to melt the vinyl. All right, so there's the uh, air-powered stapler that I use. It's just a Sure Bonder, it's called. I bought it off Amazon. It was very cheap and uh, it works okay. Um, when I first started using it, it would actually jam up a little bit. Uh, sometimes it would fire two staples instead of one staple. Sometimes it wouldn't fire any staples, uh, but the more that I've used it so far, I'll, I should kind of touch wood here, the better it's gone. Um, I do make sure that I'm using, uh, you know, air tool oil in it. Um, and once it kind of seems to get worked in a little bit, it seems to have been a little bit more reliable. Uh, I'm using T50 3 8 inch 10 millimeter staples. And I've used those in there before, and it seems to be uh, seems to be okay. So yeah, my plan of attack here on the seat cover is I'm going to staple it here at the front first, and then I'm going to staple it at, at the back, and then I'll come to each side, staple it on each side, and then kind of work my way around, I think, and uh, try to get it done without any any wrinkles anywhere. Um, we'll see how it goes and worst comes to worst I, I'll just have to pull out some staples and and do it again and hopefully not mangle up the vinyl too badly in the process again this is only I think the second time I've done this so I'm learning still So the front, popped in a couple to hold it. The back, it's a little bit tighter. I just put in four for now. So I can see how this is going to fit. 
I can already tell I'm gonna have to pull out maybe one of those ones at the back. Just so it fits a little better, but we'll just kind of keep working it. I need to pull them out and I'll pull them out. Now I'm gonna pull a couple over at the side here. I'm happy-ish with the way this is starting to fit at the back. Uh, I did have to remove a couple of staples because it wasn't, um, when I was starting to stretch it and to move it around a little bit, it was kind of off kilter. So I had to kind of fix that a little bit. What I'm not yet happy with is the front. So the foam is like right here where I'm running my, that's the edge of the foam. And ideally this piping would be right here. The part I'm having some difficulty with is getting this to to stretch over the front. I can get it over, no problem. I can, I can attach it down here underneath. Um, but I'm not really getting the, uh, the piping to fit quite the way I would like um, at this point. So, and, I, and, I'm, and the more I stretch it, it's just, the problem is that the the foam at the front, this foam here is gonna is it wants to kind of pucker up like this. The more I I can, I can pull this vinyl forward like, like so, and I can push the foam back in. I kind of get it like like so, but it uh, either it pops back out again or the foam gets all kind of curled up underneath the vinyl. So that's uh, that's not quite working out the way I would like at the moment. So you can kind of see in here, the foam kind of protrudes quite a ways past the plastic. So now, though there's lots of room to staple this, that's fine. Um, it's not uh, it's not quite the way I want it. Although I might not have much choice. So anyway, I'm gonna play with this a little bit more and uh, kind of see where I end up. Um, the other thing is uh, I, I don't really have a good, I, like it's still kind of, if you look down here, you can still see the wrinkles in here. So this has to still be stretched down on the front side to tighten it down. Cause this is kind of where the, the dip is in the seat. So it'll be important to pull and stretch down these front sides.
there slowly but surely. It's, uh, this, there, this here, this line is just where the, uh, the vinyl was folded uh, when it was sent for shipping. Uh, this, this right here is where the embossing is underneath the seat for the, uh, for the strap to attach. You see that bracket right there. But uh, generally speaking, it's coming along okay. Um, just a few more staples to put in and then the, the part that's always kind of uncomfortable is you gotta punch a hole through the vinyl on the side here for the, uh, for the strap and the screw to go through. But generally speaking, it is uh, starting to look okay. There's, there's always gonna be a few, few wrinkles until, uh, until it kind of settles down a little bit. I, I, I unpacked this thing as soon as it arrived, which was months ago, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> and most of the wrinkles have come out of it, but there's still one or two left in there, but that's, uh, that's to be expected, so. Uh, yeah, it's coming along. Not too bad. Should be fine by the time this is all done. And we're getting uh, the contouring to the uh, to the seat is coming out okay. There's a couple of spots where That's neat. It, that, that needs to be tighter or that's just, I don't know, I think it's just kind of the way the vinyl is currently sitting up. But generally speaking, it's, it's coming out okay. okay. So what I've decided to do for a little while here, and I'm, I don't know, I'd rather not rush this. Um, so I've got everything stapled on. This is the brand new strap and it comes with the, uh, the chrome uh, fasteners on it. And I've, I've inserted it down inside on each edge end. But what I have not done yet is I have not uh, put the uh, the holes through the vinyl. And the reason I haven't done that is I kind of want to wait. And if this thing decides to settle down anymore and loosen off a little bit as the temperatures warm up, I don't want to have already punched holes through this vinyl and then have to take out staples, tighten everything up again, and now I'm gonna have two holes and a better chance of this thing tearing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this strap on. I'm gonna leave this seat cover to, just to kind of sit and stretch and as things warm up a little bit. And then if I do need to pull staples and, and stretch it again, um, once, that's, once I'm happy with the overall fit, uh, I'll, uh, I'll punch the hole in this, in this vinyl so the, the screws can go the bolts can go through into the uh into the bracket underneath so i'm going to call this uh kind of 80 percent done for the moment and uh again there's no point in rushing this stuff this thing is not going on the road next week i'd rather just kind of wait a little bit to see how some of these wrinkles kind of uh settle out um it could end up just staying exactly the way it is but why rush it um I've done that too many times over the years is to, is to rush things and wish I'd waited. So in this case, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of time to, to settle and stretch. Uh, it's still quite cold here in uh, the Canadian North. So the only way I can be out here today is with the heater on in the shop. It's still like minus three outside at the, uh, in the middle of April. We had a beautiful week last week, but this week, not so beautiful. So. Lots of time, it'll get a lot warmer up in here and this uh, this vinyl will kind of stretch out a little bit and settle down and, and fit. Um, and then if I need to pull staples again and stretch it, I will do so. But you can kind of see there that I've got the, the actual seams are kind of right where they should be along the edges. And it's all been kind of stapled in. So generally speaking, I think it's kind of right where it needs to be, but um, we'll let her sit for now. All right, so there's the bird's eye view of the seat after I've uh, put the cover on. So yeah, it's looking okay. <clears throat> Quite happy with that so far. It's a good quality uh, seat cover. I'm pretty sure it was the same company that, uh, <clears throat> that I got the CBF seat cover from. Of eBay, pretty sure it came out of the UK, but uh, yeah, They're pretty nicely, uh, pretty nicely made, and the heat pleats on those things are are quite nice as well. They do come with the uh, the strap, 
and the straps already come with uh, with the metal clips and everything on them so you don't have to take those off the other ones I know some companies will just send you the vinyl and you get to kind of bend the, uh, the the chrome clips off it and put them back on but this comes with everything on it and the price is really reasonable as well